Hello and welcome to another VBA tutorial. So we are continuing uh, kind of with this little micro series, I guess. Uh, we're continuing on with our exploration of PowerPoint VBA. Uh, in today's video, we're going to specifically talk about how do we manipulate these wonderful little text box and the text inside of them. Um, so this definitely comes in handy. I know a lot of people out there, you might work for a company where you've got to work with very large PowerPoint decks or things along that nature. So understanding the VBA code behind it on how to manipulate these objects definitely comes in handy. So with that being said, we're just going to jump right into it and uh, start formatting it. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new subroutine. We're going to call it working with text boxes. First thing we're going to do, like always, we're going to declare our variables. The first one's going to be a slide object. The next one is going to be a text frame object. So that's the outside the frame. And then we want the information inside our text frame. Well, that's a text range. And so we're going to say, hey, that next one is a text range object. So that's the text inside of our particular uh, text frame. So now we need to uh, set the slide. So we're going to set PPT slide equal to active presentation. We're going to go into the slides collection, and then this is the first one in our slide. And then now that we have that, we're going to set our peep, or uh, sorry, our text frame. That will equal the slide. We're going to go into the shapes object. It is the first shape in our particular slide. Um, and then we're going to go to the text frame property. This returns the text frames object. And then we're going to also um, set the very sorry set the variable for the text range. And so that's in the text frame object. Now we just go to the text range property that returns the text range object. Okay. Now that we've done that, first thing we might want to ask is, does it have text? So does the text frame actually have text? So we'll say, does the text frame have text? Question mark. We'll print it out in the immediate council. And so we'll say debug print text frame. Um, and then it has text property. Negative one, that means true. And then from here, we can change the orientation of our text. So we'll change the orientation. And we'll go into the text frame object. We will go into the orientation property. And then we get all these wonderful little, you know, options. So if we want it vertical, for example, that's how it looks vertical. Now it's kind of weird. We don't really like it. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just put it back into its uh, horizontal. The horizontal is the default one. So that's changing the, the orientation. You can change the margin. And then we would go into the text frame. We'll go into the margin bottom and then we'll put it in points. Uh, we'll do something maybe a little bit more dramatic. So as you can tell, it kind of puts it up a little bit more. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to comment that out and then delete this. Okay, so that's changing the margin. You can also turn off text wrapped. So if you want, you can say no text wrap. Again, it's a text frame object. And then you would go to word wrap property and then it would be MSO false, or you could just put false, either one works. <clears throat> you can turn off auto size. Um, so with this one, uh, what is it? If we try to, you know, do something like that, well, technically it's already turned off, so it's not gonna work in this example, but um, if you want, you can turn off auto size and things like that. So what you can do is text frame um, and then auto size. And then you can say, you know, you can set it equal to this. So if I run this again, um, it will automatically um, auto size it. Things like that. Things along that nature. So it's, it's again, it's just kind of making a little bit more responsive. Um, you can do mix. I haven't tried mix before. Uh, but apparently that returns an arrow. So we'll set it equal to none. Ah, sorry. 
and then we'll set it equal to none. And then I'm just putting it back to where this is my title. <clears throat> so that's auto sizing it. <clears throat> if you want, you can count the number of characters in this particular text frame. So how many characters? And it would look like this, so debug print, text, and then in this one, we're going to go to the text range, and then we're going to call the length property. This will tell us how many characters. So there's 16. And then what we can do is we can actually get the text from our particular um, uh, object. So get the text. So basically all the information right in there. We can print it out if we wanted to. And so again, it would be the text range. And then um, it's actually just the text property. And then so what this will do is this is my title. As you can tell right here, it's just printing it out. And so if you wanted to, you could store it in a variable and do all sorts of other stuff with that if you wanted to. We can change casing. And so what that means is if we go text range and then we go change case method, and then we have these options, lower, sentence, title, upper, toggle. Let's just say you want upper, so all uppercase. Now it's all uppercase. And then from here, there's this weird one. We can add a period if we want. Uh, it's very interesting. I don't really know why it's like this, but it is. And if we call add periods, it adds a period to it. Very random. I don't really know the exact use of why you, I guess you would want that, but you, you can do it if you want. Uh, if you want, you can also uh, you can also select certain characters uh, if you wanted to. So if you want to select just the first two characters, so uh, we can select uh, certain characters. This kind of comes in handy if maybe you want to uh, just work with one particular one. So you go into the characters method, and then you have to specify a starting point. So I'll say, hey, start at one, and then I have to say, well, how long do you want to go? And then we'll just say, hey, maybe you want the first two. Uh, and then if you want, you can actually, let's just say you want to select those first two characters, right? So you call the select method. So here we've now selected T and H. Okay. Uh, you can change the font. So I have Roboto in my particular system. You probably don't because I have to download it in order to use it. And so if you go into the font property, you call the name property, and then you just pass through the string that is simply the name of your font. So that changes the font for you. And then from here, you can actually add, uh, add some shadow if you want. So again, text range, and then this one is again font. You go into the shadow property, and then it's just MSO true. You could also just do true, that would work as well. It's kind of hard to tell, but there actually is Tech, there is a shadow here. Uh, you can kind of see it right down there. You can also, what is it? You can find a word if you wanted to. So say you wanted to find this and then delete it. Um, this is kind of how you do it. So find a word and delete it. And so you would say, hey, go into the text range. You would go to the words uh, method. And then you would have to specify uh, the word that you, you want. So it would be start, uh, you can do equal one, and then it would be length, uh, it would be equal to one, I believe, and then like just say for example you wanted to select it, right? So that selects the first word. Um, you could also like say, oh I want to you know take that selection that I currently have and then I want to find a particular word. So we'll just say, hey, find the word this in that current selection. And then when you find it, delete it. So that just deletes it. Now, technically, you could negate this if you wanted to. You don't have to have that there. But again, just for demonstration purposes, say you just wanted to select a certain range and then you wanted to find that particular word in that range um, and things along that, you know, this is how you would kind of do it. Uh, so I'm going to turn that off because I don't want it to keep doing that. And then I'll put that back. And then you can also insert a slide number. Again, if you wanted to. So you go to text range, and then there's an uh, insert 
uh, slide number method. And then this will just put it at the end right there, just like that. And then you can also change the, the font color. So change the font color. And that would be the text range. We'll go into the font property. We'll go to the color property. And then there's a special one called object theme colors. And then these are all kind of the theme colors that we have built into it. So maybe you want it to be a followed hyperlink color, right? And that just looks really cool. And you're like, that's got to be my font color. Well, that's how it looks now. And then you can also uh, underline the text. So this will be our final example. So this one again, text range, go to the font, go to the underline, set that equal to true, and you're good to go. And just like that, it's underlined. So um, yeah, that does it for uh, this video. If you have any questions about uh, you know how to work with slide op, well not slide objects, text range objects or uh, text frame objects, you know please put them down in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, also, if you could make sure to like the video, so that way uh, you know it's kind of easier for other people to find. We always just, you know appreciate the support, so thank you. And then also, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel, so that way you get regular updates you know, as we're releasing new videos. So today's kind of a special day. I'm releasing a couple of videos. And so, you know, you might see a couple uploaded today. But uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.